share with you my most favorite way in the whole wide world to make dry goods which are typically more likely to go bad quickly but I'm going to show you the way to make them last for years. I'm talking brown rice, pasta, cereal, uh, oatmeal. These are the kinds of things that typically go rancid quickly because of the oils in them etc. This is what I do for just about any dry good. I start off with my handy dandy food saver. It doesn't matter which model you get. I'll just make this available here. It doesn't really matter which model you get. It just has to have this tubing, the airport, as opposed to the airport. Anyway, so you just need this little tubing, and then you are going to need a mason jar attachment. It's made specifically by Food Saver. You may also see the name brand Tilla, T I L L A, as you're searching for it. You need either, you'll need both a wide mouth and a regular mouth size for your mason jars. Anyway, so this is all you need. These may be expensive if you buy them new, depending on what your budget is. Um, I think they're uh, just under $200 at Costco for the whole kit and caboodle, the brand new one. However, you will have to buy this separately regardless. I haven't found any lately that have everything in them. Anyway, you can also look though on eBay and Amazon to get these used. I got, I have several of them throughout the house because we use them in different places. And I was able to get one of these for $35. Um, I've had some people find them at garage sales. So just keep your eyes peeled. It'll happen, right? Okay, so we need our food saver. We need this mason jar attachment and you'll see what it does a little bit later. And of course you need your mason jars. Now, your enemies to food when you want to keep it nice shelf stable is heat, light, and humidity. So, and of course oxygen. So we're going to eliminate all those and tell you how to do it. So let's start off with panko crumbs. I know panko crumbs probably are not on your pantry list, but they're on mine because I have to use them for several of my chicken recipes that are just through the moon, especially my lemon and chicken recipe. So anyway, I never want to be without panko crumbs. I could use other panko crumbs, but we all know that panko crumbs themselves are better than just regular bread crumbs. All right, so anyway, all I'm gonna do is just open this up, and we're gonna put about a cup in each of these little sandwich baggies. Kind of the eyeball, there we go. The reason why I'm doing them in one cup increments is because that's typically what most of my recipes call for. It's just the one cup. And that way I can just pull out a bag and have enough. You'll see when I'm finished here. Really, Japanese breadcrumbs, the panko breadcrumbs, really are the best ones to use. They're fabulous. Okay, just a little bit over there. Um, by the way, you can get these in the China markets, Asian markets for so much cheaper than you can get them in the grocery store. They'll cost you around four or five dollars even for a box in the grocery store, but they'll cost you maybe a dollar twenty, a dollar fifty if you go to one of the Chinese markets or Asian markets, okay? All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you get all the oxygen out as you're, before you close this up. So, good. And then you're gonna pop it in your little quart jar. This is all closed up. Now, you have to do this with panko crumbs because they're so fine. And if you try to seal the jars without confining them, you're going to have a problem. You're going to gum up your tubing. So let's make sure all nice and closed. Still a little more up air in here. You can do this in larger jars too. I just happen to be out of my favorite size, my half gallon mason jar size that I'll be showing you in a minute. Let's see if we get one more in here. Just about. Okay. All you're doing is putting the lid on like so. You don't want the, t the uh, ring on when you seal it, but I'll show you that in a second. All right. Last one done here. And of course, I'll label the jars and the date. 
here's the cool thing about preserving them this way is when you do you can get into these every time you're making a recipe or something just you know pull a bag out and then you can just reseal it again now obviously you can't do that when there might not be electricity or a prolonged power outage but that's okay because you can simply get a tire pump and reverse the airflow on the tire pump and seal these back up by hand just by applying the tire pump to the end of the tubing all right so all i did was put all i did was put the flat lid on here and then the uh, mason jar attachment again this is a wide mouth but they also have an attachment for the regular mouth and these will run you about ten dollars the little attachments so we're going to take our air port tube put it on here and then we'll turn turn her on we're just going to hit the accessory button and it's going to do all of the work it's going to tell me when it's all all the oxygen sucked out <laughs> even that it's absorbing so it'll turn off when it's done now here's where a lot of people may go to oopsie do they try to take this whole thing off that's not what you want to do you want to remove this first and then you're going to remove your food saver attachment now see it's completely sealed now to get that off you just want to use a spoon the nice thing is is when you're actually canning food you're not supposed to reuse the flat lids when you're canning again however with this dry canning method as long as you can use these U's that you've already used for, you know, pressure canning, um, you can use these for this particular method. You can also use my favorite canning lids in the whole wide world, the Tatler lids for this. Works just fine. Okay, and there you go. We're going to finish these up, and then I will take them down to storage. So now these were good for seven, eight, maybe even nine years as long as I eliminate light. So these are going to go in a dark room. And I'm going to eliminate the oxygen already. I'm going to eliminate heat, so I'm putting it in the coolest room in our house. And we're just going to keep them nice and fresh. And I'll just rotate through those like I would anything else in my home. Okay, so now let's talk about this. I mean, a girl's got to have her chocolate, right? So we got our little refund from Costco. And every time we get that, I always splurge on these kind of things that normally I would wait for a big old sale to come around. So these are just semi-sweet chocolate chips. Instead of storing um, chocolate syrup and things of that nature, I just store the chips, and that way I can do whatever I want with them. They can be chips, or they can be chocolate syrup in a moment. It's all kinds of great things. You can do fondue with this. So anyway, we're just filling up all of these. Now these are my half gallon mason jars. I have a lot of readers who say I can't find the half gallon mason jars. Just so you know, um, most of your grocery stores that carry the other mason jars, they will order these in for you. Um, so they're really not that hard to find. You can also find them on Amazon, just nice and easy. All right, so we're just going to fill up this last one. Real quickly here. You know how you get those white flecks on your chocolate when it's um, gotten too old? And it's unfortunate because it's just because of the oil in there that oxidizes. Now usually I tell folks not to fill up all the way because you want to have enough room for pressure to build up. But since these are chocolate chips and you've got little air pockets all over, you can just fill it up all the way to the top. So again, we're just going to put this on. And then your attachment. Ta-da! And they're playing my song. <laughs> this is going to go much fast. Uh, this is going to go really fast as well. Goes not as fast as these. Your court obviously will take less time than this. Now you're going to be able to preserve your chocolate chips for eight to 10 years on the low end. As long as you keep heat, light, moisture away from the environment that you're storing your food in, then you'll be just fine and dandy. Okay, remember you take this off first, ta-da! And then this puppy, you're gonna label it. I do like to use the rings in this case. It's added protection, but it also makes sure that the lid's gonna stay on nice and firm. So I would do that for all of these. Now, when I am doing a big bag like this, it doesn't always end up perfectly. Um, one of these would fill like another quart jar, 
which I don't have right this second. So what I usually do is the leftovers are what go into my ready pantry, such as you know the cupboards that I use regularly when I'm cooking. And so all I do is just put the leftovers in a PET container like this. You can get them with the flip top lids or just a plastic screw on lid or a metal lid. And then I just label them and it makes things really nice and organized. There's no floppy bags around. This is not going to be oxygen proof though. It is plastic and plastic still allows oxygen to get through. So keep that in mind. But this is great con considering I'm always using them. I'm always cooking, etc. However, this being glass, oxygen's not going to get through. It's not going to attract mice and such. Um, moths, nothing. They're going to, the only thing it will attract is you <laughs> when you have a craving for chocolate. And the good news is, is you could just sneak down to your little storage room and open it up and Take a bite and then reseal it and you're good to go. What more could you want? This is great for all your nuts, your seeds. Why wouldn't you use seeds that you're going to plant? Maybe seeds you're going to sprout. Um, any of your dry goods. Brown rice, that will last 10, 15 years like this. It's absolutely wonderful way. And I'm going to show you in another video how I preserve my jars to make sure they don't break in an earthquake. So. Tune in for that one, and we'll see you next time on the Preparedness Pro.